1989, more than two dozen people were rounded up in D.C., accused of running a massive crack cocaine operation in the region, including Tony Lewis Sr., his last day as a free man, until now, 34 years later. So you, you have the sentence of life without parole. I mean, that's... This dude right here, he was tied in with Rayford Edmonds. He went down at the same time as Rayford Edmonds. But he kept it straight, just thorough, 100% bona fide, keep your mouth shut, gangster, to the end, man. You want a life sentence, you know, and God opened them gates for him. You know, Jehovah will open them gates. You know, man cannot stop Jehovah from doing his work. If Jehovah wants to do his work, he's going to do his work. And that's a prime example of what Jehovah, how his work is not impossible for man. It's impossible for man, impossible for man, but possible for God, you know. And he showed that right there. You know, he would, anybody knows that a life sent to the feds without telling, you don't come home. And, you know, not only did this man come home, but the reason why he came home is his son. His son fought for him, man. And, man, that's just... Man, that, that, that right there is the, that is the, this is the biggest success story from a kingpin dope boy that I've had, you know, that I have ever heard. You know, you can't top this, man. You can't top this. You would never name one dope boy that had life. And came home and did not wiggle with them people and give them information in some form or fashion. Name one. I don't know none. He's the only one. He's the only one. And, you know, you got to, man, you got to salute this dude, man. Straight up, you got to salute him and his son, man. It's a strong brother right here, man. Strong brother. Let's check it out. His name is Tony Lewis. Pretty much. It's a slow death sentence, actually. That's what life without parole in the federal system is. They don't want to use those terms, but it's a slow death. Lewis Sr. was 26 at the time. His son, only eight. My mother sat me down and like, you need to write him. He needs you, all right? He needs you now. Their bond unbreakable. Man, that boy look just alike, too. Dang, they twins. That boy look just alike, man. I'm telling you, man, imagine the love that that man feeling right now, man, and how proud he is, man, and how proud that young dude is of his father for being that man, being that stand-up dude. Yeah, he made some bad decisions, but he, stares, he stood for something, man, all the way to the end, all the way to the gate. He didn't fold being a break for no man. Man, that's I'm telling you, he's a different breed, bro. Despite the barriers, with constant communication, Lewis Sr. was worried about his son's safety, navigating life in D.C. during the seemingly inescapable crack crisis, poverty, and also when his former partner, drug kingpin Rafael Edmund III, became a federal informant. I broke the law. I understand that. Um, and I should have went to prison, but just not for the rest of my life for nonviolent drug offense. Man got life without parole for non-violent drug offense, man. Non-violent drug offense. That's, that's, that's bull crap, man. That's ludicrous. For over the same drugs that the CIA let in. Our government let the same dope in. They basically let dope in, give it over to the man, just like they did Rick Ross, and turn around and lock the man up. For the same dope they give him. Man, that's... Boy, listen. Boy, listen. People can say what they want. And yeah, we got it better than a lot of countries. But 
there's nobody more devious than our government. There's no country out there that's more devious and scandalous and sneaky and snaky than our government, man. Facts. Salute. Tony Lewis Sr. Salute to you also, Tony Lewis Jr. Salute. 1989, more than two dozen people were rounded up in D.C., accused of running a massive crack cocaine operation in the region, including Tony Lewis Sr. His last